Hello and welcome back. Today, let's have some fun with the Heart Mix Blend Mode. The Heart Mix Blend Mode is a strange blend mode and acts like a threshold adjustment. After a Heart Mix Blend Mode is applied, the resulting pixels will either have a zero value or the full value for the channel. This results in an image with only pure red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow and of course black and white. Actually, the threshold adjustment can be easily replicated with the Heart Mix Blend Mode. Let me quickly demonstrate this with a black and white image. If I add a 50% grey fill layer and set its Blend Mode to Heart Mix, we will get the same result with a threshold of 50%. I have added a threshold adjustment in the meantime and as we can see the end result is the same with a 50% grey Heart Mix layer. If I increase the threshold to 75%, I can replicate this now by increasing the black level of the grey layer to 75% or in other words setting the luminance to 25%. Awesome! Now that we got the theory out of the way, let's have some fun. I will add a lot of noise to the grey fill layer by using the Add Noise Live filter. I'm going to put this on top of the fill and then group them. This way the noise filter will only apply to the grey fill layer. Excellent! And now let's set the blend mode of the group to hard mix. We get this dithered effect which is pretty cool. By adjusting the noise and the fill color in the group we can modify the effect. But wait, there is more. We can extend this technique and create a half tone effect. I will add a procedural texture filter and have it generate a checkerboard for me. As this will be the base for the half tone effect, let's make sure we have enough black and white boxes. Perfect. This layer was already added to the group with hard mix. So what we need to do right now is to add a little bit of blur to it. By adding the blur, the transition from black to white will become grey, which then will trigger the hard mix blend mode, just like with the noise. If we increase the blur to a very high value, the checkerboard pattern will just become grey as a result of the blur and the whole group will act just like a threshold. Because we have used a live procedural texture filter, we can easily modify the density of the checkerboard to our liking. You can also apply the same trick with pattern layers. Let me quickly draw a couple of circles and convert it to a pattern layer. If you want to know more about pattern layers, check out my video about pattern layers. Link will be in the description. Awesome, we now have a half tone from circles. I can modify the pattern layer and it will be directly applied. We can also combine this pattern layer with the checkered board layer we created earlier. You get an interesting half tone pattern. By using this technique you can create your own patterns for a half tone effect. This is fun, but how can we utilize the hard mix blend mode in a more practical way? Let me share a technique that works well with landscape photos. For example, let's have a look at this image. The image is a little bit dull and I want to make it interesting by bringing more color and contrast to it. The sun is setting down and this image would look amazing if we can get that golden hour look. Let's utilize the hard mix noise dither effect we used earlier. I have made a duplicate of the image and made a group on top of it with a grey fill layer together with the noise filter, as shown earlier. When I set the blend mode of this group to hard mix, we get the dithered effect. As I'm trying to make the image warmer, I will adjust the grey fill and the noise until I have the colors I'm looking for in dithered format. Something like this. To utilize this, I'm going to blur the duplicate and the hard mix group by grouping them together and applying a Gaussian blur to the group. We need to increase the blur radius until we get rid of the dither and we get a nice smooth blend. This gives a good base to blend this with the original. A soft light or overlay blend mode will work nicely. Before moving on, let me demonstrate why the dither is important. 
If I turn on and off the noise, or in other words, the dithering effect, you see the difference. By using the dithering effect, we smudge the colors, giving it a much better blend. So I'm going to group it one more time, so I can apply a blend range to it. This will allow me to restore back some details in the shadows. To give it a more of a golden hour boost, I'm just going to apply the Nuclear Gradient Map preset. As the name states, this is quite nuclear, but with the help of blend ranges, we can dim its power and have a look at that. It is still too red and yellowish, so let's fix that by applying it as a soft light. If we now lower the opacity of it, we get this nice touch of color and contrast. A quick look at the before and the after. Pretty amazing. I feel the final is a bit too purplish, which is coming from the gradient map we applied. So let me adjust the blend range again, so we retrieve back some of the original colors. Awesome, that looks pretty good to me. As you have seen, with the help of the hard mix blend mode, we really transformed this image. A quick note, this technique will not always work very well. As mentioned earlier, it usually works well with landscape and nature photos. Here is another example. Applying this method also really worked well for this butterfly. It darkened the background and gave the image more color in general, resulting in an image where the butterfly really stands out. I hope you liked this video and learned something new along the way. Thank you for watching, keep safe and until the next video.